Hi, hello, this is the first lesson on digital storytelling. Today we are going to talk about play and narrative, how they uh, interact, how they are uh, contradictory in some terms. By doing so, we have uh, first to define uh, some concepts like uh, narrative, storytelling, but many other concepts related to these uh, approaches. We are going to talk about the storytelling uh, story in video games. Also, we are going to uh, explore some examples of video game uh, approaches to adaptation, how to adapt to video game. And uh, this is basically the main uh, element of the, the whole module. So we are not going to enter very in depth on this. We are going to use uh, an example of a very well-known uh, fairy tale. So let's start what is exactly narrative, how that interacts with uh, storytelling. Well, uh, there are different definitions of uh, narrative. Uh, classical approaches are someone telling someone else that something happened. It is about the narration. It is someone communicating something. So this definition makes a emphasis on the way we tell the things. So it's not only uh, what we tell, but the way we tell these things. So there is a, a structure there, but also there is a style, there is a form. Okay, this other definition by uh, Raymond Kennan makes uh, uh, emphasis on the distinction between fiction and reality. The narration of a succession of fictional events. Think about, for example, a fable. It's the typical example of um, uh, storytelling. Uh, someone tells you a story of uh, a wolf that was dressed as a lamb. That doesn't seem to be uh, very realistic. Obviously, it's a fictional. Uh, but it's not really uh, that you are telling the story of the wolf uh, um, dressing as a lamb. You are referring to many other wolves that are dressing as lambs. You are referring in allegorical terms. So uh, this is an example of how fable indicates that storytelling is just a part of the puzzle. The, there are uh, storytellings are related to uh, news, politics, marketing, uh, big media franchise, or classic fairy tales. All of those are examples of storytelling. Fictionality is an important uh, part of many uh, storytelling, but uh, you will have also examples of storytelling that is not using fictional events. My definition of narrative uh, here is uh, much more operative, I think. Uh, I want always to differentiate between agents of uh, the action, the characters, the events, okay, the obstacles they have to uh, overcome, uh, but very important as well, the motivation or the goals of the character within the narration. If you think about this, this is, if not a definition, at least uh, a list of the different elements a story should have. If you cannot differentiate one of these elements from a story, it might be possible that that uh, product is not really a story. In a traditional sense, we usually uh, use these uh, Greek terms, mimesis and digesis. We refer here to the difference between reality or uh, the construction of a reality, the construction of a story. The storytellers are creating realities, creating worlds that doesn't exist usually. Uh, another concept is the story itself. Okay, uh, the story includes events, but when the story is presented 
in a, a media form, like for example a movie, you are really talking about plot. Plot and story are not the same. Plot, for example, in a crime movie might present a, a, a detective coming to a scene and uh, making investigations and then discovering the killer of, uh, you know, uh, someone. But the thing is, if you think about uh, in terms of sequence or uh, logically uh, sequence of events, actually the story implies, first of all, someone kills someone, then the detective comes to discover the body, etc. So obviously events doesn't have to be ordered. The plot is the way they are presented in the media. The story is the logical way they have to happen. Cause and consequence. Many other terms might be related to narrative. Difference between fictional and non-fictional stories. The concept of genre that we are going to talk in one of our lessons. The storytelling or the act of telling the story. Okay, Performing, for example performing uh, a narration. It's not only uh, that we can do stories through media, we can tell stories ourselves. Authenticity, is it believable? Is it not believable? Is it real or not? There are many different concepts here. I'm not entering in all of them, but I think it is important to adopt a critical attitude. Are we using the right terms when referring to narrative? One of the most uh, important uh, discussions within game studies is uh, the relationship between uh, representation and interaction. Okay. Is it possible to represent something uh, without interaction? Yes, you can. Everybody would think in a movie where you don't do anything, although that could be discussed because some people would say there is always interaction even when you watch a movie. On the other hand, it is, is it possible to create a, a pure interaction without representing? That is not simple either. I mean, any interaction would imply a representation. Playing with a video game character would imply to represent an avatar, to represent a scenario, to represent behavior, attitudes, many other things. They are there, they are presented. And because they are presented, they are representing other elements okay because it is impossible to construct something without using symbols but as any dilemma it has uh, confronted visions uh, in this case uh, the other group of researchers would say no it is possible it's always possible to construct pure games games that don't have any narrative okay so these uh, are called as well radical ludologists. And they are uh, always using as example uh, games like simulators. Okay, What is the narrative when you are simulating fishing? Well, someone would say is the narrative someone who goes fishing. But uh, the point here is that the narrative is not imposed, it's free. Is uh, depending on the user. So in that sense, it, it is not a narrative. Not a particular way of narrative, I mean. And on the other side, you have uh, narrative aspects of uh, video games. Like, for example, uh, the use of cutscenes. Okay, This is what we call remediation. And it's uh, the introduction of a language into another language. So digital media languages, like, for example, video games, can include other forms of language, like comic books, movies, uh, animation, etc. And as we have said before, all uh, media can be understood in terms of interactivity and immersion. Think, for example, in Dora the Explorer. I think we have commented this before in other classes. This is a typical example where, you know, you can create a video and you can expect some behavior from the audience. In fact, uh, when we talk about these theories, we are not really talking about anything new or fresh. We are talking about something that is 
based on Aristotelic uh, theories. So this is the third century before Christ. So uh, when we talk about genres, for example, basically we are talking about uh, the different uh, emotions or the different um, effects that we expect to have with our uh, stories. And this was already uh, theorized by Aristotle when he talks uh, about uh, arousing emotions, uh, being trustable, or, uh, you know, to change the mind of someone, and to deliver information that is to be logical. And if you think about that, this is the main uh, classification of what genres are. Uh, to think about uh, something as uh, fun, fictional, uh, fantasy, for example, to think about something like uh, able to persuade, uh, able to change your mind. So, for example, propaganda or advertising has their origin here. And then uh, also when you think about uh, delivering news or telling something, okay, delivering instructions or information, education, this is to be logical. But if you think about this, it is uh, very clear that there are not pure uh, effects, okay? Many things that are entertaining can be also persuasive or can be informative and vice versa. I mean, there are many combinations. There are not pure forms of these effects. And this comes to any modern media. So think about uh, a YouTuber. Can a YouTuber have ideology? Can a YouTuber transmit an idea about politics or about, uh, uh, you know, any important thing in society? Or, of course, they can. They can. It doesn't mean they always do. But all these things are mixed. Communicating through digital media involves elements as well of entertainment, persuasion, persuasion and information. And all of these bring us to the fairy tales, how this works. Well, fairy tales are a very classic forms of storytelling. Okay, maybe most of you uh, might think of uh, fairy tales as Disney movies. They are, but they are also many other stories that are uh, told in different traditions. So uh, the the first time these stories were studied were uh, by anthropologists like Levi Strauss or uh, Joseph Campbell or Vladimir Prop. This um, uh, approach, a structural approach, was uh, mainly identifying uh, the same stories in different uh, uh, cultures, different countries, different traditions. And that was very surprising for them. Because they understood, oh, this story is very well known. It is ancient. It has another name in another culture. And uh, this uh, was transformed into different theories, defining archetypes or defining different states in, uh, in each story that were common to different cultures. Narrative theory evolved later to differentiate between the way the stories relate to each other. Like, for example, the theories of adaptation that define that there are main elements within a story, but there are also other elements that are just as true, that are only fillers, and these other elements are called satellites. Let's see some examples of how we could... Uh, construct or adapt a fairy tale into uh, a video game or a digital product. And I'm going to talk only about uh, four of these approaches, but in fact, in one of the labs, uh, one of the workshops, we are going to work on some more approaches. So this is only an example of what the kind of products, what's the kind of products you can uh, try to produce uh, in this module. So think about uh, Red uh, Little Riding Hood. Everybody should be familiar with the story. And there is um, a little girl and there is a wolf and there is a grandmother. And all these are elements that we consider essential 
the kernels in this story are main important things. Like, for example, the the uh, little girl needs to look for the grandmother, needs to bring something, and has an encounter with the wolf, and the wolf clearly is not good, wants to eat the child. Okay? And then there is a, an ending of that. And in this case, depending on the tradition, there is a, a positive ending or a bad ending, a different, different versions of the story, okay? It is well known that the Perol version, uh, which uh, might not be canonical because this tale uh, refers also to uh, oral traditions, but the Perol version is, is negative. It tries to be moralizing. It's like a fable. Now think in terms of general. Think about uh, uh, Little Red Riding Hood as what it would be if uh, this story would be a survival. What if this would be a game where the character needs to survive and the wolf is trying to chase her and uh, eat her? Would be still uh, an adaptation, valid adaptation of the fairy tale? Would it still be recognized as the same fairy tale? It might not be that important, but this is one of the strategies I propose in order to construct our products. Think about graphic adventures. What are the main uh, challenges that you have uh, to associate to the character in order to uh, um, finish what we call the narrative program? That is um, the final mission of the girl. The girl needs to go to a certain place, so that is a big challenge. But there will be a small challenges, like for example, a stage in the forest or a stage uh, uh, in the in her house when she's preparing the food for the grandmother. So obviously, there is here another different game, and again, it's using some elements that uh, seems to be essential, seems to be kernels within the main story. Now go for a different thing. Let's uh, think in terms of audience. What would be the difference between creating an adult version of uh, the fairy tale? Like, for example, something like R-rated, like uh, very violent. Like, for example, if you are caught by the wolf, uh, you are uh, killed in a very gruesome way. That would be still valid? Yes, why not? Would that still be an adaptation of the fairy tale? Yes, probably would be. We will think of that in terms of audience. Creating a product based on audience is one of the main strategies in any kind of design. But you need to understand very well what the audience is, the profile, the demographics, the motivations, the way they spend their time. Uh, this is something we are going to talk about during the module as well. Now think in terms of character. Uh, depending on the story version, you always will have the girl and the wolf. But sometimes you have also the mother that is explicitly uh, telling something to the girl or at least is preparing the food she needs to bring to the grandma. But it could be a grandfather. Why it has to be a grandmother? Instead of a girl, it could be a boy. Why it has to be a girl? We can maybe genderize this maybe change the gender of the wolf. Why the wolf needs to be a, a, a boy? Maybe it could be a sea wolf. And what about the person who saves, you know, uh, the girl, the hunter or the farmer or whatever it is? It could be also a different approach to this. We could do a space version of Little Riding Hood or it could be a horror version or it could be a... Uh, version with, uh, you know, all of them squirrels. I don't know, doesn't matter. But defining the character in another way would be changing the aspects that we define as recognizable of the story. There are limits, but the limits are very blur. Another approach would be purely textual. It would be studying very well a particular text, for example, the uh, parole version of the, the tale and then adapting that in a 
very, very uh, faithful uh, way. That's what we call canonical adaptation. But what about uh, if we take approach more on collage or more on commentary? I mean, there are many ways of adapting a text. So uh, what we will see as main problem uh, within uh, this module would be how to transform linear narratives into reticular narratives, narratives where uh, the possibilities are not, uh, you know, linear. There are different options. There are different uh, narrative itineraries, if you want. Some of the sources we are going to employ are related to video games narrative, video games character design. These are all in the reading list, which is updated. I recommend strongly to be update with new video games, but also uh, uh, get documentation about previous video games, games even uh, from previous uh, years or maybe 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Sometimes you can find very interesting examples of narrative in games from the 80s or the 90s. Why not? And of course, open yourself to all the media. It's not all about video games. Video games are just part of the puzzle. They are all influenced by all the media. Video games are just doing again what we knew already from comic books, from uh, board games, from uh, pen and paper role-playing games, and many other forms of entertainment. That's all for today. I hope you find this uh, uh, fun. And I hope as well that you have a better idea what this module is about after this first lesson. I think uh, the main idea here was to introduce the concepts of narrative and play, but also many other concepts related to these two, okay? So uh, remember as always that we have a different optional exercise uh, that you can always uh, uh, work. Uh, the discussion this week and uh, other optional exercise references. So that's all for today. Uh, let's uh, make an appointment or let's talk uh, during the labs. If you want to uh, explore any other idea related to these concepts, I think uh, this is a, a very long-term uh, work and I hope we have time during these uh, weeks to uh, learn more and discuss our own ideas about narrative. So uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, see you soon.